Hi, this is Swapnil Bhartia here and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk. And today we have with us Alok Parikh, founder and executive vice president of products at Stream. Alok, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Swapnil. Pleasure to be here. Today, we are going to mostly talk about the launch of Stream 4.0. But before we go there, uh, this is, I think, the uh, first time that we are talking to somebody from Stream, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so tell us a bit about the company itself. Uh, what do you folks do? Uh, you know, because you are also founder of the company. So talk about the pain point that you saw in the industry that you wanted to kind of fix and address, and you created the company. Yeah, gladly. So, uh, you know, we focus on real-time data movement in the industry. And this real-time data movement solves, uh, you know, three very interesting problems for our customers. Um, that has to do with real-time analytics, uh, real-time operations, and then just the real-time data movement at a very large scale. And so, this day and age, as uh, our customers are, you know, trying to just rewrite their applications, uh, you know, either for digital transformation or to take advantage of. Uh, you know, new customer experiences or to provide better, uh, more agile, faster services, you need to have uh, real-time data. And so we really focus in on that uh, specific market. Can you quickly also uh, talk about the space, the market for, you know, of course, real-time data? Um, what are spaces, what are the industries, uh, what kind of workloads they kind of use real-time data? Sure, sure. Glad, glad to. So, I mean, you know, I think it's best contrasted with how... Um, you know, a lot of businesses today are actually, in fact, uh, you know, moving data. Uh, to a large degree, um, if we examine the data integration landscape, uh, you've had a lot of, uh, you know, infrastructure uh, platforms. Uh, these could be the likes of, uh, you know, Informatica or Talent or, you know, IBM's own, uh, you know, Infosphere family, et cetera. Um, in, in general, um, you know, what we see is that, uh, to a large degree, the outlook and the framework of these products is very batch oriented to a large degree. And uh, that fundamentally introduces um, a very interesting problem that um, you know, when you move things in batches, um, let's say end of day or sometimes for very large companies that have you know, just massive volumes of data, it might be three to five days, uh, the freshness of that data uh, may or may not be uh, sufficient to satisfy a number of different services that one has to offer, you know, for their services or their customers or their associates or partners. And so in real time data integration, what we really mean is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very interactive outlook. Uh, no longer am I satisfied with the fact that, um, you know, if you're analyzing all of my, for example, purchasing history over the last month, and then you have some sort of a recommendation for me, um, you know, we are just one click away from uh, selection of services or selection of our choices uh, because of, you know, just the fact that, you know, um, you and I use our mobile devices. Uh, we can change our minds very quickly. You know, there's a lot of price fluctuations for our services or maybe an improvement in services. So given that, um, if you don't really have real-time data, uh, it's a very, very difficult to actually compete with others who do have real-time data. So what we try to do is we shrink the latency between you know, many of your operational systems and there are downstream systems that might be trying to do analytics or AI or you're writing your own logic on top of that to serve your customers. So we try to really make sure that that latency is very interactive to the degree that, that you still have the, the attention of the customer or the consumer and they are still interacting with the business. And that's really what this whole real-time data space is all about. Is it specific to certain industries or you know, real-time data integration makes sense for most modern businesses today who are looking at, you know, of course, when we talk about cloud, we talk about multi-cloud. There is no single cloud we do on-prem. So as we talk about hybrid or multi-cloud strategy. So talk about uh, who is it for? Yeah, no, great, great question, Swapnil. So, you know, of course, you know, our view, um, and this is not a biased view, um, we have hundreds of customers and our own customer base is actually very, very diverse. So we have a number of, uh, you know, customers who are in the banking and financial sector area. We have a number of customers who are in the healthcare area. We have lots of customers in travel, logistics, transportation. And then finally, we have a lot of customers in 
retail. So if you take a look at this landscape, clearly this is something that is more of a ubiquitous type of a type of a requirement. And, uh, you know, but there are certain industries where, you know, this makes a lot more sense, uh, particularly, you know, in retail, what we are seeing is, um, you know, you have some mammoth uh, marketplaces now that are created online and you know who I'm talking about. And so you, so you can always go um, and uh, purchase almost any item there. So if you were trying to compete in retail, you know, with uh, these newer players that have emerged, um, and you're still invested in a lot of legacy infrastructure, then how do you make sure that, you know, your inventory and your product and your catalog and your order management systems have visibility such that, you know, your fulfillment of the order is live in real time and you don't end up with your consumers um, who mostly now have this omni-channel kind of a mindset where I might actually go ahead and order online, I might go pick up at a brick and mortar, and if the item is not available, I'm going to have a very, very poor customer experience. So in retail, we do see this quite a bit, but you know, like I said, it is, it is universal. Um, we're seeing a lot of applications in healthcare, where increasingly, you know, because of the current pandemic, um, you know, oftentimes clinicians and doctors and physicians and their assistants and rehab facilities, they all wanna see a temporal 360 of, you know, either the patient or the records. So how do you actually bring this information together so that, um, you know, the urgency and the low latency of it can be satisfied? Um, and we've all wanted to get there for the last 20, 30 years. The interesting thing is it's possible and many are actually doing it today. Uh, so, you know, just the answer to your question, uh, Swapnil, for sure is that it's not specific to a, a, a specific vertical. I, I do think that uh, this is a very, very broad based requirement. It just so happens that certain sectors are a lot more um, at risk if they don't adopt right away, they don't transform them right away. How much importance is given to the modernization of data architecture uh, as we do talk about you know, just the transformation, everybody talks about you know right application with this code, that code. What about data? Can you? How much are you seeing there? How much focus is being given? If it is not enough focus, should it be given? And if yes, why? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, that's a, a very good question and very interesting question as well. I mean, I can share with you, you know, what we are seeing and you know my own view. Um, and just starting back from uh, you know my my graduate school days uh, at Stanford, you know we we always used to understand that um, you know there's a separation of concerns between you know business logic, application logic, and the data. Um, you know uh, we tried this in the 60s and 50s and 70s, where you know the data and the and the application logic sort of coexisted, and that that created all sorts of problems. And which is sort of like what led to the separation of concerns, you know, relational models and these other models came into, into picture precisely so that, you know, data could, you know, and the storage layer could be somewhat separated out. And um, it is as relevant today, um, in my view, uh, if you take a look at what, you know, uh, let's talk about cloud native applications. So if I'm starting out fresh, uh, you know, I have a new, um, you know, startup. Um, that's one thing. I, I have the luxury to pick cloud native applications, and perhaps you know all of the data uh, comes in the future of my of my undertaking, uh, which is sort of the rare case. Most of the businesses that exist today, and there's like you know millions of these businesses, they've been operating for a number of years. So you know through their own you know organic growth or through mergers and acquisitions, they just have a ensemble of these different systems applications you know, right from servers and, and, and finally the data. So it's very important to handle data uniformly and that actually survives and that outlasts, you know, almost any coding language or programming language or any new um, architecture pattern, if you will. So, so the second part of it is, you know, that we see is it's also uh, important to make sure that modernization principles are being applied to the data itself. So if you have data which is, um, let's say, in certain formats, they that may not be easily shareable or accessible. Then you know, as part of you know, not only converging and consolidating data across multiple systems, could you also modernize it so that it's easily shareable? And and this pertains to these concepts of citizen data or data democratization, where um, you know the time where there were a few experts in an organization and they sort of had the power because they could understand and interpret the data 
through their programs, that, that is sort of like a, like a passe uh, view of the world. What we increasingly see is that there are smart people. There are smart people in your marketing organization, engineering organization, in your you know, uh, financial organization, risk organization. And these guys want to look at data in very different ways to kind of you know, understand what value could they add to, 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 the, to the business. So in a sense, I think data becomes the product at some point. And, and so unless your products are increasingly not beginning to reflect the importance of data within them, I think that you're going to have more of an antiquated type of a service, antiquated type of an offering. So I think data is hugely important. It's going to continue to be important. And, um, you know, and, you know, the last point I'll make there, uh, you know, my own view is we've taken several stabs at this uh, to try and get everything together, um, you know, maybe in Hadoop or, um, you know, in maybe data warehouses and operational systems. I, I strongly think that's going to continue to exist. There's, there's no such thing in my view as getting all the data in one place. Um, you know, this one size fit, fits all paradigm. Um, I think, you know, many have commented before before me. Uh, it's, a, it's just a super complex, super challenging thing to, to sort of, you know, uh, uh, arrive at both in terms of the throughput and the latency requirements that all different types of diverse applications have. So I don't know if I answered your question. That's kind of like the, the overall take on data in my view. No, it, you did answer also, this is a topic, you know, which is like open-ended, you know, there are so many ways where we can go with that. So yes, thanks for explaining that. Now we talked about, uh, you know, real time, of course, integration. We talked about the industry which are using it. Now I want to talk a bit about, you know, what are you folks doing uh, to, I mean, of course, help users. That's where we are here for, right? To help users with what our technology you folks are building there. Uh, and, and, you know, if you can also share the iterations, you know, of the the, the platform itself, the version 4.0 was out. So in, in, in a way, what I want to understand is that let's just reflect on this this discussion and how much of that, you know, is there in 4.0 release to, uh, uh, you know, address some of the challenges to solve some of the problems. So, so talk about it. Yeah, sure. So let me, let me actually just uh, maybe um, uh, step in a little bit uh, deeper um, and peel some of the layers. So, um, so Stream is a platform. It has two eyes, as you know. Um, you know, it's spelled uh, deliberately because one of the eyes represents uh, integration and the other eye represents intelligence. Um, and when we talk about intelligence, you know, um, you know, we thought about it a lot. Um, you know, we, the founders in this company, you know, had a very strong background in database replication um, in our prior products. Uh, and then I, I had a database background. So one of the things is, um, you know, this, 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 uh, requirement and need for real-time data, we've been working with this for, for many years. So I would say close to, you know, 15, 20 years. The, what was missing was, you know, as you move data, you know, there, there's a lot of trending and a lot of analytics that um, customers began to ask us, you know, could you, you know, go ahead and run these analytics for me? So the question is, you know, why do you care? Why can't, I mean, you have such amazing analytic systems. Why can't you just move the data and then analyze it? Okay. And, and there's a very interesting, you know, analogy here of, um, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, maybe to give a simple example, if I want to have, a, if I have a large jar and I'm trying to put in different types of, you know, uh, marbles in it, which have different colors. Um, if I already know that someone's going to ask me for a count of, uh, of the marbles by, by color, I can dump all the marbles in the jar. Uh, and then actually go ahead and, you know, allocate a few people to sort of, you know, sort them out and do a count. Uh, and then, you know, that's a group by query and then you can actually come up with a result. Um, but in many cases, uh, if, if I know ahead of time that that question is interesting, the best time to count that up is while you're adding the marbles in the jar. Okay. And this is sort of the intelligence piece that, that, that is a foundational principle uh, in stream that not only is it a real time data integration platform, but we are aware as the data is coming in, we have the luxury to count up the data, the, the data and the metadata um, so that you know, there's a number of continuous queries that can be answered in real time. And you know, if I'm looking out, for example, a window, um, and I should be able to tell you that there are three blue cars and 15 orange cars and two trucks and so forth, no matter what, I, I'm just, it's sort of my view. So this windowing capability is something that's a very powerful thing that can be done 
on the fly in the integration pipeline. This is where Stream is very, very different compared to a lot of the traditional players. In fact, many of the emerging startups are beginning to think about this when they talk about streaming analytics, but we've had streaming analytics in our data integration platform day one. That's how it was designed. In fact, we uh, had a, our own patent filing way back uh, in 2014 and it's been granted. So. Uh, people are welcome to read it. So this, this is what's new. So now coming back to your question about, you know, Stream 4.0 specifically, you know, over the years, as we put in a lot of the, uh, the features and the functionality into the platform, so we focused a lot on making sure there's hundreds of connectors and we can move data in real time and the system could be scalable, you know. Um, so so we, we solved those problems. In 4.0, the key problem in my view that we have solved is number one, just making it simple and making it automated. So, you know, the user experience part of it, how do I actually design a pipeline so that it's simple and I don't have to make too many modifications in almost as if I'm, you know, judging the intent of the user and giving you a very, very, you know, uh, rich experience, smooth experience. So we've focused a lot. Uh, we have a number of features dedicated to that where we've reorganized our, our flow designers and, you know, there's a lot of out-of-the-box wizards that uh, users can use. So I think there's a lot of emphasis in that area. Number two is on the monitoring side, because um, one of the things that we learned along the way was, um, you know, when you have real time, if you move data real time, by definition, when that data is not available, um, it becomes somewhat mission critical because you businesses and services start relying on it. Um, and this is a very interesting example. I was talking to one of the one of the uh, CIOs of a, of a telecommunications company. And, you know, it was a little bit of an interesting discussion and an escalation. And they told me, look, you know, we were we, we lost 15, 20 minutes on this thing because they had done some maintenance. Um, and I asked them, well, what were you guys doing before using us? And, um, and the response was, well, you know, we were getting data, you know, we, we would basically have all these subscriptions and end of the day, we would get a report. But, you know, once you implement real time, you're getting that report every minute. And so all of the executives in the company start uh, questioning, hey, what is the current count if you're not getting that data? So, um, so coming back to sort of the second piece of it, the monitoring around it is also something that we've invested a lot in and to try to make it simple. A very simple example I give is when you go to an airport and you walk to, your, to, your, uh, to the baggage claim area, and there's, a ter there's a terminal, there's a monitor there. And the monitor, when it says your first bag has arrived, that gives you a sense of reassurance. Um, you don't have to do it, but when it's there, you actually appreciate the value of it. So we've tried to give that kind of an experience for our data subscribers who are building these pipelines. So when the first event in a specific pipeline comes in, or if that event is absent for a while and you're expecting it, how do you alert on it? So there's a lot of uh, emphasis on simplicity and monitoring so that you know, these critical applications have the right alerts and people can actually respond to them in a, in a very business efficient manner. Excellent, excellent. Once again, uh, thanks for explaining things in detail. Uh, I think now I have everything uh, we understand about the company, we understand, you know, of course the latest release and also thanks for going back a bit and explain the stream, you know, original uh, as well. Uh, I think now I have everything else and of course, we can always get you folks back on the show whenever you know you want. Should we wrap this up for today? Sounds good, Swapnil. I mean, if you have, unless you have any other questions, uh, I'm always happy to come back. And uh, I just wanted to just also mention that today we have, uh, you know, uh, almost every um, city block that you travel, you'll definitely see a stream customer. Uh, these are trucks walk, going by delivering packets. These are retail retailers. These are. Um, shops that you can walk into. And uh, I'm really excited that we're part of this modern digital economy that a lot of the customers are beginning to rely on our real-time data pipelines. Excellent. Uh, Alok, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about, of course, the stream platform. And more importantly, uh, the challenges for you know, real-time data integration and how people should actually focus on data architecture as well. So thanks for sharing all those insights. And as you rightly said, you know, let's get you back on the show uh, soon. Uh, but thanks for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.